All right, so first thing we're going to do, take a quick look at the top of the map here. I already like what I'm seeing. And we look at the top and we can already breathe a collective sigh of relief that there is no slime boss here. Already this feels good. No slime boss. I also see no mandatory elite. I also see early shops. Let's see what the starting bonuses look like. Ooh. 100 gold or lose all our gold for a random rare. I could be pretty okay with a random rare relic. Late Nanas, thanks for 550 bits and those good luck wishes. Nuzalar, thanks for six months of support. No heart attacks this time. That's the goal. So, looking at our act layout, you love to see it. Optionality is the name of the game, at least for me personally. Optionality meaning the ability to adjust our path based on what has already happened. So I'm thinking we, depending, we'll, we'll talk a little bit here about gold versus random rare relic. I think it's going to be one of these two starting bonuses. You'd have a hard time convincing me to upgrade a cord over one of these two. Uh, I'm not going to risk everything on a boss swap here and now. Not, not for this run. So I think for me that means we start up something like, hey, start up something like this. And from here we have beautiful, beautiful options. We can either tackle this elite and get the reward afterwards if we feel like after a few card rewards and question marks we're ready for an elite. If we're not, we can simply avoid that elite, continue along this path. And then there's the option to run into this elite as well at the end. Could even be an option to go for the burning elite, although we'd have to give up a rest site to do that. And I really, really struggle to imagine a circumstance where I think that would be worth it. So, with the shop's position thusly, we have a couple good opportunities to spend 100 gold. What 100 gold gets you at a shop... I mean, we could even look at two shops, right? Yeah, we could even look at two shops. So, what 100 gold gets you in the early game is the ability to buy a relic at the first store. Um, a relic and maybe also a potion or a card, potentially. And what that gets you is usually some sort of immediate bonus. You buy a common relic that's relevant, like a, a Vajra or a Smooth Stone or a Nunchaku or a Bank of Prep or a useful shop relic like a Toolbox, a Sling of Courage. Could even grab something for later. Or we can swap away all our money, get a random rare relic, of which quite a few are very useful. Although there's a few duds in there. Um, on Silent, especially the Specimen early on would not be useful. Unceasing Top would not be useful. Are Shuriken and Kunai affordable? No, those are uncommon relics. And so on Ascension 20, they'll have a base price of 265 gold. Carissa's has got the, the full list of prices there with the, the shop command. So you can see the exact price range for everything that we could buy. Interesting to note, with 200 gold, you can also buy something like an uncommon colorless card and a card removal, or an on-sale rare in a card removal. Stone Calendar, actually, so Stone Calendar I'd be really happy with for one big reason. Stone Calendar means we're 52 damage closer to solving the act boss. It also has potential to help in um, the Legavul and Elite fight, but that aside, it's guaranteed to help here against Hexaghost if we get Stone Calendar. So I'd be very happy with Stone Calendar, quite frankly. Silent Leg of Illin is a big problem, that's true. So the not going with the shop line also gives us another event to look at, right? If we, if we aren't visiting shops, we are visiting other important nodes that can help us out here in the early game. I'm a really big fan of this rare relic, the more I think about it. There's definitely a chance it doesn't help us now, but as I've said, uh, as I talked about with the, we took a rare start for our Ironclad run previously, and as I mentioned with that, um, even if you don't get an immediately useful rare relic, you're one relic deeper into the rare pool. The next relic, rare relic that you find, um, is more likely to be useful to you. Tigerbot says, says what? Tigerbot Hash says, what about taking a hundred gold and then only going to the later shop? You mean just to this store? Or dodging the shop entirely. If it's just going to this shop, you get the added bonus of more events along the way. One more event here. 
higher, has a higher chance to give you more money before the shop, depending on exactly what the event contains. That could be worth or not worth. So compared to, let's say, going to the first shop, you're getting about 15 gold from one fight and one more event to prepare for the shop. This shop. That has a, a small chance of being relevant. I, I don't know if the chance that that's relevant is greater or higher than the chance that you would just want both shops, period. Home Biting, thanks for six months of support. I think in either case, I'm going to be avoiding the shops and taking the random rare relic here, which ends up being a pocket watch. And a pocket watch is, if you ask me, definitely among the better starting options in Slay the Spire. Now, Silent is not exactly the best character to take advantage of the Pocket Watch. However, its overall power cannot be denied. And this is absolutely going to make us a lot more comfortable in Act 1, if nothing else. Very, very happy with the Pocket Watch. One of my personal favorite relics. And the, the, kind of the whole reason behind taking the Rare Relic at the beginning. It really lets you not only have a powerful tool, but a powerful tool that you can build around. We're much more likely to be able to take the Red Elite now already. Um, Pocket Watch will also naturally combine with Poison Cards. Best hit on Floor Zero? Do you mean by that it's the best of the Rare Relics to get, or just it's this Rare Relic is best to get on Floor Zero if you're going to get it? And the man says, Never thought Pocket Watch was good until you watched me play with it. Always impressed with the power. Yeah, three extra card draw is very, very useful. That, consider that most card draw relics will give you three card draw at maximum for an entire combat. Pocket Watch can give you three card draw every turn. And all you have to do is occasionally not play a card to maintain the consistent super draw. So what is this? Strike, defend, defend, or... Hmm. We ended up rolling maximum health on this cultist here. It's a chonky lad. 56. We gotta play... Neutralize and four more strikes to kill. So we're definitely playing neutralize this turn. I'm thinking neutralize, strike, strike, defend? Next turn, we're attacked. We can always block the 16 next turn, right? Defend, defend, survivor, and then I'll always draw lethal. And I take three this turn. The other option is neutralize, strike, defend, defend this turn. Defend, survivor, strike next turn, probably. I guess that gives me a chance to redraw neutralize or something. But it looks like either way, I'm taking three here. Unless I can guarantee that I'm redrawing into the neutralize. I don't think it's going to matter, right? Because three strikes and two neutralizes would only be 24 damage. don't think there's a guaranteed way to take less than three. Merle says, isn't zero guaranteed with newt? Strike, defend, defend. You might be right, actually. Because that does 9 damage. We bring it to 17. We block. We block. It's at 17. So yeah, we just have to draw 3 strikes. Neutralize in 4 strikes. No, you're right, Merle. I figured there was a... A line that, uh, that cleanly did this. I just don't know why I couldn't see it. But no, you're, you're absolutely right. We do nine damage this turn. Now, well, we just need three more strikes in one turn, um, which we're guaranteed to draw after this full block. Ah, oh, thank you. We'll be looking for stuff like that more as well. So yeah, we draw all eight of these cards. We're guaranteed to do 17. There we go. Something was feeling off to me. It's, like, it's impossible that with Pocket Watch, we can't perfect this fight. Ridiculous. A deflect, a finisher, or an all-out attack. I gotta tell you, I'm exceedingly pleased with an all-out attack. 
as a, a first damage pickup. Not only is it a really good upgrade, going at 14 damage to everyone. Helps us deal with multi-enemy fights, which we're currently a little weak against. Although, honestly, the three sentries, not a problem with the pocket watch. Is Finisher worse with Pocket Watch? A little bit. Finisher, we're not really going to want to take cards like Blade Dance. So Finisher is unlikely to find cards that it's good with, although having additional draws does make Finisher better. So you could do something like wait one turn, draw eight cards the next, which is two Blade Dances and a Finisher. That could be powerful. Generally speaking, I do not like Finisher as a first card on Silent. I do not trust it, even with the bonus draw. Uh, and compared to the all-out attack, I think it's just overall weaker here, at least for now. So I would, I would overwhelmingly prefer all-out attack to finisher as the first card in the stack. That's true, even if I'm not facing slime boss. All right, our second opponent is the twin slimes against whom all at attack is already doing some work. We can go Survivor, Neutralize, Strike, all at attack, take one. Is there any way to take zero? No, because Neutralize, all at attack doesn't kill the front one. Let's card that. Hey, we even got rid of the Ascender's Bane. Good work, us. And here we shouldn't need to take any more damage at all. Thanks to the power of Pocket Watch. Alright, we got our first potion, as well as a max roll on money there. That's kind of nice. And, well... Well, well, well. What have we here? There is one damage card offered, Bane, contingent upon having poison. We don't have any poison cards yet, which makes this Bane pretty mediocre. With the ability to generate large hand sizes already, it's extremely hard to turn down a calculated gamble. Zero cost, discard our hand, draw that many cards anew. There's many, many relics that can make calculated gamble extra juicy later on as well. So I think overwhelmingly I'd prefer calculated gamble here. These are decent enough commons, but... But why common when you could gamba? Give me the Gamba. Alright, not going to the shop. Or are we? Well. So that would have happened here, or... I guess not if we'd gone this way. But yeah, what would the first shop have contained? On sale well-laid plans. And a nightmare. There was Sling of Courage. One does wonder. About the world where we took 100 gold. But then I wouldn't have a pocket watch, so eh, I think I'm better off at the moment. So, not the great greatest outcome from our first question mark room, but actually not the worst, honestly. Oh yeah, Sling of Courage Attack Potion. Couldn't have done Sling of Courage Attack Potion well laid plans, though. Hmm. Tough sell. Alright, our third opponent, the dreaded and all-powerful Jawworm. I'm thinking Survivor, Defend, Strike, draw all of this for next turn. As long as we keep using the Pocket Watch, this shouldn't be a hard fight. I don't think we need to lose any health here. Not going to play that Neutralize, because we want the bonus draw. Hmm. I haven't buffed Strength yet, and I think until the Jawworm buffs Strength, I don't need to take any damage. Just keep playing three per turn. Pocket watch. But well, we've won. 
All right, another good fight. So we only lost one health in the first three combats, thanks to the power of the pocket watch. That's pretty exciting. Uh, what's not exciting, though, is the lack of damage that thus far we've been offered. That said, Leg Sweep is an incredible pocket watch card, a two-cost block. So I'm pretty sure that's what I'll take over skipping over acrobatics and expertise. I guess the big question before us is, can I... Can I fight an elite? I guess we'll have to see what the question mark contains, but we're a little low on damage here. We'll have an upgraded all attack, but that's about it. Thing is, that should be enough for either Lagavulin or the sentries with the pocket watch. But yeah, I'll take leg sweep. Another option to consider, we could go one more card ward first, go this way, but we give up a rest site to do so. And what about the Gremlin Knob? Let's see, so we would have to take at least one big attack from the knob. That much is certain. Let's see. We're drawing essentially eight cards per turn. And we have a calculated gamble too. And our... Let's assume our pattern is strike, 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 all at attack plus. So we do 20... 24, 48 per two turns. So probably about four turns to kill. We also have a power potion that could help me out. That does mess with pocket watch, it's true. But the main reason I'm considering doing it is that both sentries and Lagavulin are, are very easy with the current deck. Knob, not so much. But remember, Knob will be weakened at minimum, thanks to Leg Sweep. Although, if I play the Leg Sweep, I'm not doing as much damage. But we can survive one or, honestly, even two big attacks from the Knob. They'll only be for 18 apiece. Is Lagavulin easy with Pocket Watch? Yes. And with Alt Attack Plus doing base 14 damage, also yes. Yes, I think Lagavulin will be easy. I'm not sure what Power Potion entirely whiffing would look like. I'll go this way. Oh good, it's a combat. So let's let's ignore the current discussion. Let's get another card reward before I go yammering on about what we're going to do or not do. So I can either Calculated Gamble here or we can Triple Defend and then draw every card in the draw pile. Which would allow me to guarantee Neutralize Leg Sweep All at Attack or something like that. They could all three attack me next turn. If I gamble, what we'd be looking to do is draw leg sweep, all at attack, probably. Not every card? There are... Oh no, there's nine cards. Yeah, not every card. And we'll be weakened, which means the all at attack won't kill them, but that's already true, technically. Could actually increase the amount of damage we take this turn. No matter what, we're pretty much guaranteed to draw a full block next turn. And if they all attack next turn, things will be pretty good on the third turn. I'm gonna just block this turn. Keep the gamble. Okay, they do all attack, which means we can actually go block heavy, and we'll know that neither of these will attack me next turn. So I think this turn I'm going to Leg Sweep, Survivor, Neutralize. Nice and simple. We block for 19. We get attacked for 7, 6, 6. Guess what? That's 19. We'll break the block on the, the back one, as this is the only one that can attack me next turn. We'll be back to that all attack with the power of Pocket Watch. Lice can't attack you three times in a row. That's how I know the front two are not attacking me on this turn. Nice and easy. All right, 13 more gold and a terror. 
It's also footwork, which is pretty dang good too, but we're just talking about the merits or lack thereof of a gremlin knob. And let me tell you, if this is gremlin knob and I take terror, we're going to have a much better time. Also really helps against Hexaghost. For those wishing for an early terror, I think one of the best cards if you're going to go attack-based silent, making a particular enemy take 50% more attack damage for the entire rest of a combat. Uh, terror is definitely a pickup we need. We also, yeah, like, like I said, we need more damage for Hexaghost. We need more damage for Gremlin Knob. So this is an easy terror. Indeed, hopefully it's not on the very bottom of the deck. Hopefully it's not even a Gremlin Knob at all, but uh, that's what the Calculated Gamble is for. I think with the terror, we should be pretty safe to engage in, a, in, a, in an elite combat here. We'll want to upgrade the all-out attack. It could go quite badly and we end up needing to rest. We don't have to fight the, the following elite, don't forget. And um, if it does go badly, we're still getting a relic. What I'm not going to do is fight the burning elite. That'd be crazy pants. And what I'm not going to do is also not upgrade all-out attack. We absolutely have to increase the base damage of this. It's our most important damage card versus all three elites. And the plus four is substantial as well. All right, who's our first elite? I'm doing it. It is a Lagavulin, probably our best opponent. Um, especially with Terror here, this is, this is perfect. We might even be able to perfect this fight without even having to invest a potion, thanks to the power of the Terror. But we could consider investing the potion. I think it would make life easier. Um, we only have this fight. Let's get another potion. There's not many fights where potion, uh, power potion will do more impact than this. Okay, I'll use it here. Fumes, plans, or accuracy. Good fight for fumes. Good fight for plans, too, actually. Hmm. What plans? Keep the all attack plus. Wake with three attacks. Strike, strike, all attack. Don't play the neutralize here. Do keep the leg sweep. If I don't discard it randomly, that is. Draw eight more cards. Block. Keep block card for now. Pretty much got to play all at attack when we see it, though. So this is survivor defend all at attack. Keep the gamble. Don't play neutralize. Don't play neutralize. Keep gamble. Better do as much damage as we can on this turn. Could be three strikes. I guess I'd have to do math. We do 27 damage. If I do three strikes. Math time! 61 minus 27. Leaves them at 34. The following turn. This will do 18, these will do 6. So that would be enough. Yeah, that'll be enough. If I just strike, strike, I'll attack now. That won't be. Hmm. Got calculated wrong there. I needed one more strike, looks like. Looks like I did. Okay, so we'll survive or defend then. Take 11, win the fight. Keep all our attack. Yeah, okay. Hmm. 
have to draw another strike again, though. done. Okay, let's do this first, though. <laughs> Why am I not surprised? Ah! Alright, I'll take a slight amount more. Let's keep this. Alright, that wasn't perfect, but we did win pretty decisively, and we do get a toxic egg meaning all skills will be upgraded from here, such as this Blade Dance Plus. Or this Concentrate Plus. Didn't get a potion, though. Interesting. Interesting. But what about Dagger Throw, unironically? So Blade Dance doesn't go very nicely with Pocket Watch, but can be a really, really powerful card for the late game. Or just mid-game. Dagger Throw is simply a decent attack, adds one draw, one discard, something that I'm sure will be useful with, a po with the uh, Toxic Egg later. Also helps us get rid of burns occasionally, which can be quite useful. Better against Gremlin Knob as well. But here's the thing, concentrate! Got an infinite gamer already, huh? With Pocket Watch, it, it can do some fun stuff. Slayer, thanks so much, so much for con from converting from Prime to a Tier 1 sub. Welcome, welcome. Making it official. Yeah, Blade Dance with Tear Down is 24 damage. Dagger Throw is only 13 under the same circumstances. So there is that to think about. Concentrate Skewer Pocket Watch. I like that, too. Getting Hex Ghost. And we still need more damage for boss. Also true. All right, I'll take a Blade Dance. Shafanov, thanks for six months of support. The question is, what do I do with this rest site? And do we go for the next Elite here? Imagine we should. But I'm thinking about either upgrading the Neutralize or the Terror. Upgrading Neutralize would be to shore us up against Grumlin Knob. 39 isn't the ideal amount of health. I did botch some against the Legavulin. But we're in pretty good shape. We also get one more Relic and one more Event before we actually have to commit. Not as interested in rest sites later at this act anyway. I guess we could go around this way, and that'd be still fine. An oldie but a goodie for Silvardo. Did you hear about the silent that was allergic to knives? She broke out in shivs. Neutralize is a card I'll often not choose to play because of the pocket watch, which makes me prefer maybe a leg sweep upgrade. If I wasn't fighting Hexagos here, I would legitimately consider resting, just so that I could always absolutely definitely not die to a Gremlin Knob and still beat the act comfortably. Um, but because Hexagos is our act boss, this could be a wasted rest. Return weak, weak, weak on Leg Sweep is really nice. Alright, I'll do that. Classic Co, thank you so much for the Prime sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. And an Ink Bottle. Whenever you play 10 cards, draw a card. Ink Bottle Pocket Watch, kind of like Mortal Enemies, but I think with the Blade Dance Plus, they'll be pretty happy they found each other. 
All right, and I'll take this question mark. We'll see what we get here. Lose HP, gain a relic. Well, you know, I was considering doing that anyway. And I'm pretty afraid of Gremlin Up. Why don't I just take a couple clicks here? Let's say click up to three times and then go a different way. Just leave Gremlin Ob alone. We go either three or four combats, collecting upgraded skills with the Toxic Egg. But indeed, no card reward or gold, at least not from this node, but we'll get them from here. I'm going to click three times. One, two, three. We get nothing. And I leave. All right. Such is the Spire at times. Such is the Spire. Let's see, 16 plus a bunch. Sure. Get a duplication potion and some interesting cards. Deathly Poison Plus and a Catalyst Plus. It's pretty tempting to grab this Catalyst first, right? And then just like find another poison card. I don't think we're allowed to do that in this position. I could take the Deadly Poison though. It is upgraded and pretty good. Helps a lot against uh, Hexaghost. I think Poison and Pocket Watch go pretty well together as well. There's a world where we could take this Catalyst, but I'd, I think with a Toxic Egg, I'm, I'm not going to need to do that kind of level of speculation. Let's grab this Deadly, though, so that we are allowed to grab another Catalyst if we see one later. And let's keep taking combats for now. Easy peasy combats, no less. Slice dagger throw infinite blades. Don't need any better damage cards right now. I don't. Feels like a skip to me. I think you could consider Dagger Throne. It really makes taking a uh, Reflex Plus a lot easier. There might be too many cards added. This could also let me take a uh, Hovering Kite a lot more easily. And with terror, it's decent upfront damage. My gut is telling me to take this. I'll do it. Trust in the gut. The gut knows all. Neutralize all attack. Yeah. Want more cards turn one against Hexaghost? I suppose I do. Hey, we finally get our potions. And a backflip plus or a blur plus? I'm taking one of them. With a free upgrade, they're very hard to turn down. Uh, I like the overall draw of backflip especially, but there's definitely utility to blur with an upgrade. Letting us retain block from turn to turn. Genuinely tough choice. It's definitely some beautiful green cards. Really like having backflip for Act 2.
really like having backflip for Act 2. I think I'd prefer the draw over the block retain, at least for now. And with everything set up, I think we're good for our boss fight now. I'll take one event here at the end. Not, I don't think I have a good enough reason to continue taking combats. Although we haven't seen a rare card yet, have we? Could maybe get an extra rare card offered to us if we take the combat. Could also take a bunch of damage if we take the combat, although it's relatively unlikely. Hmm. Let's take an event. Remove a card or gain money. Moving a card brings me down to 13, but does let me get ahead on getting these stinky strikes out of the deck, which is a pretty valuable thing. With Pocket Watch and a Weak Potion and a Dupe Potion, 13 health should be plenty for Hexaghost. But what if we get Pandora's Box? Then we'll be transforming one fewer card, which is not the worst thing in the world. Although there is some merit to loading up on money going into Act 2. Does Pandora's Box give upgraded skills with a Toxic Egg? Yes. Yeah, 13 hit points is, is really pushing it. I agree. Maybe this is a take the money situation. Not planning to rest. I'm gonna either upgrade Calculated Gamble or Terror. Probably Calculated Gamble. But yeah, we could also go Remove and Rest. And I'd be okay with that too. I think I'm gonna go Money and Upgrade Gamble. That was a good roll on the money too. Isle of Gold. Grab as much as you can. So in the Hex Ghost fight, our goal is, well, one, deal damage with the Terror, but two, play the Deadly Poison basically as much as we can. We need to stack poison on this nerd. I like to think of Hexaghost as a damage race to 250. You need to dish out as much as you can as quickly as you can in order to make sure this ghost doesn't kill you with the dreaded Inferno move later on in the fight. So let's gamble here. We, again, we're just looking to draw deadly poison as much as we humanly can. There it is. And since I've I want to, I can break Pocket Watch for another 24 here. That's probably worth it. Let me Pocket Watch next turn. Do that. Oh, right. Let me let one shift go. That's fine, too. Don't... Let's see. One, two, three, four. I'm wondering if I should have duplicated one of the Deadly Poisons. Let's see. We have one buff, attack, attack. Inferno. So we have four turns to do 131 damage. We're dealing 16, 15, 14, 13. So we got 58 from Poison Spoken for. We can do another 21 plus 18. Which essentially gives me three turns to do about 40 damage. I can do that. Yeah, Ghost also gets 12 block now, but that's not going to matter because I'm not doing any damage this turn. Easy. Oh. 
Um, can actually just kill you now. Bottle's on nine. I suppose that's fine. So we'll just take the two from the burn. Any way to prevent that too? I could defend, but then I have to take the six, so no. Let's do that. Okay, that wasn't too bad. We'll swap out the weak potion for a fire potion and hopefully see a upgraded rare card. We do, it's burst. There's also a wraith form, which is pretty good also. Wraith form with dupe pot, pretty tempting. Wraith form with pocket watch, also pretty tempting. Zonard Stark says, is there a specific reason that burn happens after orbs, but before poison? Yes. Yes. Generally speaking, at the end of your turn, um, things occur in the following order. First, relics at the top activate. Then, any status effects on your character activate. Then, cards in hand activate. However, with poison... Poison is a stat effect, status effect applied to the enemy, so it only applies on the enemy's turn, which occurs after everything in your turn. So, your relics at the top, your status effects in the middle, your cards at the bottom, then any effects on the enemy is the order of operations at end of turn. Technically, the poison damage is the beginning of the enemy's turn. Now, if we'd taken that catalyst and, and had a poison card already, I'd be more interested in burst. I think I'm just going to take a wraith form here and be quite happy with uh, an option to gain a couple of intangible. We'll see what our boss relics are. No Pandora's box here, but there is Black Star giving us extra relics off elites, Calling Bell giving us extra relics now, or Philosopher's Stone giving us extra energy, but giving the enemies additional strength. Not the best of the boss relics, but I'm pretty happy with these overall. Hmm. So the question is, do I take the energy from the Philosopher's Stone, or do I go with the Calling Bell? I don't think I could be convinced to take Black Star here. We're just not aggro enough to kill the Elites of Act 2, even with the Wraith form. We're not aggro enough to kill the Elites of Act 2 without some help here. I like the Philosopher's Stone in this instance because the, well, two things. One, we have an upgraded Leg Sweep, which can really mitigate enemies. Two, any Piercing Whales or Malazes we find will be upgraded. And lastly, we have Wraith Form. And Wraith Form totally disregards extra strength on enemies because you'll be intangible. And it also lets me play a card alongside the Wraith Form, which is nice. Some turns will break the Pocket Watch. That's okay. Early priority in the act is going to be shops. We want to remove at least one strike from this deck. Hey there, Lamb Goon. Hmm. Jake Cedar says, Is it wrong to go for as many events as possible here to fish for apparitions? I think there's quite a few things that we could get in shot in events that would be good. Apparitions, especially now that we have a Wraith form, would certainly be worth um, strong consideration, although I would not like giving up half my max health. Since the apparitions would be upgraded, I think that would be pretty good overall. I mean, Calling Bell could be really nice with the right relic, but I think we just want more energy here. I'm going to take more energy here. Our act boss is Champ. To fight Champ, I think we mostly want a way to retain cards so that we can hold on to the Wraith form. Um, and we'd maybe like to pick up some more poison options. If we could find a catalyst, that'd be great. I negotiate with terrorists. Thank you for converting from Prime to Tier 1. There's a couple ways through this act. I think we start with this shop. We might go to two shops. We might opt out. We could take a lot of question marks here. If we want to. 
Though I'm still not convinced that this is actually the best use of my acts. So I'm not sure about that. And then maybe something like this in the last half of the act. We could also go to this shop. But either way, I like fighting these elites. After we upgrade our Wraith form, after we reassess our hit points, after we look at a couple of card rewards. Big ol' Flex, thanks for the Prime sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. Yeah, I think it all starts with looking at this shop, no matter what, pretty much. Hey there, backflip. Don't mind if I do. Alright, I can take three in order to draw three more cards next turn, or I could play Terror Neutralize this turn. Take zero, but only draw five cards next turn. We'll be attacked again for 24 next turn, so I'm thinking being able to block that with Wraith Form or with a Leg Sweep and a couple defends is going to be pretty important here. So I'm going to end the turn. Give me your gold. You'll not get away with it. Hey. I said, ye will not get away with it. All right, this man needs to die. Pronto. Haste. Post Pronto. Hasty pasty. Looks like we leg sweep here, deadly blade dance here. To play dance first. Pocket watch is a thing. We might get away with it. Okay, I can backflip Survivor instead of Leg Sweeping. That'll be better. Draw the auto attack. Good. Might have to Fire Potion to kill this one. Yes, we're one short otherwise. I'll do it. A little unfortunate, but not the worst thing in the world. Get a flex potion back, so that's a pretty much even trade if you ask me. We're offered a backstab for some upfront damage. Despite the pocket watch, I think backstab still could be pretty useful to us. There's also a flechette, which scales based on number of cards in hand. Particularly good with the pocket watch and the toxic egg, I have to say. This thing, this card could really hurt, although it'll really want an upgrade. Flechette's gonna really scale up. I think one of these two is better than skipping. What point do you let the pocket watch go when you're able to use cards to draw more cards than the pocket watch could draw? So Ink Bottle gets us part of the way there. Backflip gets us part of the way there. If we can find an Acrobatics Plus, we're going to be most of the way there. It's really the flex potion that makes me think about the flechettes, especially right now. The AI would take Sucker Punch. Let's try these flechettes. I'm going to be removing strikes post haste. There's a tactician plus here. Uh, and I think perhaps more importantly, a footwork here. Another thing that we could oddly think about is Panacea as a way to block the debuff of the Wraith form. It's a bit iffy. But absolutely no question, what I am going to do here is remove one of these strikes. We cannot abide having all five of them for the rest of this act. 100 gold for our next removal. So I could continue to go this way, remove another strike here, and that would really, really help us out. This 
footwork of the Wraith form good? I tend to think that it is, generally speaking. Um, you don't always play the Wraith form early in a combat. Sometimes you need to wait a while, such as for Champ. We're going to be needing to wait a bit. What did the silence say to the debuff from the Flex Potion? Panna, see you later. Beautiful. Simply beautiful. Yeah, I think I do buy the footwork. And then be on my merry way. We'll have enough money. If we go th through two more combats, we'll have enough money to either buy a relic or remove a card here, as we see fit. Predator is also nice with Pocket Watch, that's true. For two energy, deal 15 and draw a bunch of cards on the next turn. I do think Panacea has some hilarious later utility, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to the next shop with the money threshold we're arriving at here. Get him. Shots first wouldn't have mattered. I can backflip, but it doesn't make me really more likely to draw anything other than, I guess, the Ascender's Bay. Let's do that. As long as I play only three cards per turn, we should be able to full block the Parasite pretty easily each turn. Just have to be a little diligent. Again, not, not playing fewer than three, even though it might benefit us in the moment to do so. Effortlessly defeated the Shelled Parasite. That's a pretty good sign. Dodge and roll plus. Cloak and dagger plus. Deflect plus. Do like me a dodge and roll plus now that I have a footwork. Grenoff joining the immortalized list of channel cuties. You got it. You got it. All hail, a new channel cutie joins the list. Deflect's also not too bad here, quite frankly. Take the dodge first. We don't want too many blocks, but we do want a lot of blocks. So what does that mean exactly? Who really knows? I'll do as much damage as I can to these two this turn. Just had a feeling. See how it is. Uh, neither attack me last turn, right? Try, lady. Good 
good potion, but I think the current ones are better. And there's the deflect plus I can take if I want to. I'll do that. That'll round us out fully. All right, we've got a very defense-heavy deck at the moment. We'd like to add more poison or some upgraded attacks now or something. Some more efficient attacks. Although note, as we get more skills, the flechettes is going to start to hit harder and harder and harder. And that too is a good thing. We have exactly enough money for a max roll shop relic. So let's take a look at what's here. Aha, uh -huh, I was wondering if we could see Dead Branch this run. Can't buy it though. Instead, there's Strange Spoon, allowing us to keep card that gets played half the time. I'm eyeing second copy of Footwork. We can do second Footwork card remove. That's pretty good. There's also Footwork Acrobatics Piercing Whale, which is very similarly good. But I'm not going to take uh, Strange Spoon, that's for sure. It's nothing really good to keep with it. It's an acrobatics plus. Ah. Definitely hard to go wrong with Piercing Whale. But we're getting more card rewards. You can always get more card rewards. You can't always get more card removals. So I'm thinking footwork card remove, personally. Of all the options here, although there's some reasonable contenders. Ah. <laughs> Whale remove instead of footwork remove. Hmm. Or acrobatics remove instead of footwork remove. Both reasonable options there. Not bad options at all. Reasonable options. I think upgrading Wraithform first. The footworks, the terror, and the flechettes are all pretty good upgrades as well. But if we're going to have this Wraith form, it needs to say plus on it. It's a good dupe for later. Alright, this is definitely a spooky combat for a defense-heavy deck. But I think we drew well enough on turn one. We're not too bad here. Think I'm planning on going long against Chosen. We want to kill Cultist first with both the Terror and the Deadly Poison. Is that true? Guess I don't know for sure. Hmm. Cultist definitely needs to die first. That can there can be no question of that. Good, that just outright kills them. So let's go... Footwork. Then flechettes. Then draw. Could neutralize. I think I would much prefer to... actually draw my blocks next turn, so I'll take the three here. This is a pretty scary fight against Chosen. Right, exactly. So, if that's what you choose to do, I'll go Wraith Form, Deflect, all Attack. I'll be intangible for a couple of turns while you sort yourself out. Keep drawing with Pocket Watch here. You need to be weakened. Do I play Blade Dance? Not with this draw, I don't. Not gonna have much dexterity for next turn, but next turn's not a big attack turn. It's a small attack turn. Next turn. Let's find out. Or I can just block it, right? Yeah, easy. Also, it looks like I might be able to do the required 31. This is uh, 3 damage each, so Blade Dance does 3 times 4, 12. Plus 2. 
plus, uh, this is another 12. So 24, 28, 28 plus four is 32. So we've got the damage here. As long as I play the all out attack last correctly. Dagger throw is even here to join in. Okay, that wasn't too bad. There's the poison we've been looking for, as well as some damage. Nine poison, and when the enemy dies, deal ma damage equal to the enemy's max health to all enemies. Not just a rare card, but an upgraded rare card, and one that combos with Pocket Watch. This is assuredly an amazing find. Just assuredly so. Skewer's not too bad either, but the Corpse Explosion, far better. That alone doesn't make me feel confident enough to take on the Burning Elite, so I think we're going to go this way. We'll upgrade, I guess, one of the footworks? No, we'll upgrade Flechettes. First. Fight this Elite. Depending on who it is and how well it goes, we may rest or not rest. And proceed. Oh, that's right. I owe Merle a dad joke. Surely he's willing to wait for it, because when it arrives, it'll be a pearl in the rough. A joke fit for an earl of a land. Or maybe it's bad enough that it'll make him hurl. Either way, you should squirrel this one away for the future so you can use it again. Okay, I'll upgrade the flechettes. We're going to look at our next middle-of-the-act relic, which is a ninja scroll. Start of each combat, put three shivs into my hand. So that does kind of help me right away, but it's pretty bad with Pocket Watch. And it prevents me from getting any other turn one card in hand effects. Like it will prevent the bag of preparation from working. It'll prevent the toolbox from doing its full effect. So that makes me want to take the Sapphire Key. Let's do that. That way we can take a Cursed Key from our um, champ fight anyway and be much happier with it. All right, and let's look at our opponent here. First up, Book of Stabbing with plus one strength versus the Silence. Before I dive into this combat and figure out what exactly we're going to do here, I'm going to take a short break, refill my water, use the bathroom really quickly, just make sure I can keep thinking straight. Um, I do think this is one of the deadlier opponents that we could have gotten. It's a single target I can't kill with the corpse explosion. So I imagine what we're going to need is the almighty flechettes. So, Book of Stabbing, very much a damage race. Uh, although I don't think I want to play Wraith Form turn one, even if we draw it. I'm thinking we footwork, we want to get rid of the one-time use cards. So, failing anything else, this will be footwork backflip terror. Although, depending on what backflip draws, I may or may not play additional cards. If I get Deflect, we'll probably go Deflect Auto Attack. If I don't... I don't know what we'll do. I'll play Corpse Explosion or Deadly Poison for sure, if we see either of them. Not willing to dupe the footwork. Not this one, anyway. I'd rather dupe Wraith Form, probably, in this fight. Let's see what we draw here. We do draw the Wraith Form, that's okay. So we'll plan on drawing back to it and using the extended vulnerability to our favor here. And I think that means we want to just take this. I could block here, full block. But then I get three fewer cards next turn. So I think I'd rather get the bigger draw next turn um, so that we can get Poison down and then draw back into Wraith Form. That's essentially the goal here. Play the Poison, then draw and play the Wraith Form. Mad Goji, thanks you so much for the tier 2 sub and the 11 months of support. Heck yeah. But we also get a wound, right, for uh, for not blocking. So this is... 
kind of like draw, draw two. Still worth it, I think. All right. And I think this is where the Flechettes comes in. Possibly our potions as well. Let me do a quick little bit of math. This is currently five hits. So nine upgraded would be 11 base to 16. Yeah, 16. That's pretty good. It's deeply tempting to use both the potions right now. If we use both the flex and the dupe potion, we can actually just kill. With flechettes for 160 damage and then follow up with a strike. That said, I don't think that's actually necessary. Because we full block with a leg sweep, right? This goes to 6 times 3, that's 18. Not quite a full block. We go flechettes, strike, leg sweep this turn. Next turn, we draw all of this so I can full block again. It'll only be the big hit for 25, which will be weakened down to 18 or so, 18 or 19. That I can block quite easily. Survivor deflect. Um, and then I should have a kill on the turn after that. I could also do like Flechette's Calculated Gamble with the Flex Potion, try to draw into the Blade Dance. But I don't think I need to use this Duplication Potion. That's what I'm ultimately conveying here. I'm thinking I should gamble. We'll draw seven out of these eight cards. No weakness for next turn, huh? Or do I leg sweep then gamble? I'm just gonna gamble. Yeah, we we'll got the blade dance. Good. Well, that's getting played. Get him, shivs. Still sixteen. Uh, math. Seven plus six. Plus uh, nine. 22. So guaranteed kill would be Deadly Poison Strike. Don't think I need to do that. Maybe I do. Or we can go Deflect, Defend, Deadly Poison. I get an Ink Bottle draw next turn also. We'll be fine. 16. This is technically only 13, so we actually play the Strike, not the Deadly Poison. We're still one short, though. And there's our missing card. Good. All right, I'd call that a really good Book of Stabbing fight. We managed to avoid losing our duplication potion unnecessarily there. Get 34 gold, a mummified hand, making a card in hand free whenever I play a power. Another footwork offered to us, or a piercing whale plus. I think I'll take the piercing whale, but another footwork's pretty tempting too. I also think I'm going to rest before we go for another elite. Um, we didn't lose all that much, but I also don't have that many good upgrades at this point. Good. So yeah, let's rest and let's fight another elite. Oh ho, even better. A man with an eye patch and a devilish grin strides up to you. Hey there, stranger. Interested in advancing science. I can make you stronger than any training or blessing. What do you say? So, we can either get Jaxed, giving us... This is Jax Plus, giving us a card that loses 3 health to gain 3 strength. Not that good, although kind of cool with Flechettes. We could transform 2 cards, presumably transforming 2 strikes. If we get any skills, because of the Toxic Egg, they'll be upgraded skills. And that's a big reason to go transform here. 
or ingest mutagens, obtain a special relic, giving us three strength on turn one. I think the transform is the, the pick here. We're, skills are the most frequent type of card, so we're very likely to get upgraded cards, whether they be common, uncommon, or rare. There's also some good powers we could get that we'd like to see. But almost no matter what this hits, we'll be pretty happy. We get a bullet time plus and an Envenom. Interesting. Can't say that I'm necessarily upset about that. I do want one last event as well. All right, these nerds. How are they going to do against us? Our best AoE card is here, all at attack plus. Don't think it's good enough to dupe that. Probably going to gamble here. As this opening hand just doesn't seem like it's good enough for me. Sure, we could do Footwork, Defend, Survivor, Terror, Auto Attack. Eh, doesn't seem like it's sufficient. Raven3010, thanks for 21 months. This sub can now drink. We need to find the Corpse Explosion. We need to find the Wraith Form. Give me something different, please. There's the Wraith Form, good. Um, so how do I want this to go? I could just go Wraith Form in two more cards. Or I can try to play basically everything here. We play Dodger Roll, Deadly Poison. No, that won't work. But work first? Hmm. I can also not play the Wraith Form. That seems idiotic, though. Since we have Corpse Explosion, we should target the middle one, so that when the middle one dies from the poison, the, the minions will both die as well. If I was going to do that, I'd probably just want to go Wraith Form Deadly, no other cards played. There's no need to duplicate Potion here. We got Wraith Form on turn one, we don't need to use the dupe pot. We're going to be just fine. Sure, I don't want to play the footwork. I'll take the three. We rested for a reason. It's on top. Okay. It's fine. And then block. Good job, Lachettes. You made it easier. For all that, we get a Juzu bracelet, ensuring we cannot encounter combat in this last room. I suppose I'll take it. Also get a healing uh, 15 health from the regen potion and... And Twitch chat. Catalyst Plus. Yes. And we can choose one of 20 cards to add to the deck with a Toxic Egg. So let's look at many more upgraded cards and maybe take the Crippling Cloud Plus. It's not the world's worst uh, prepared plus either, actually. Or Backflip Plus, also pretty good. But I'm thinking, if now that we have a Catalyst, we do want a few more Poison Entries. Especially Area Poison Entries, AoE Poison. And high cost cards in general. But other things worth maybe thinking about, like I said, backflip, prepared, heck, outmaneuver even could be interesting. Although I think with bullet time we don't need an outmaneuver. Do we ever upgrade in Venom? Eh. No, I upgrade footwork. French Fry Apocalypse says, what are we hoping for from an Act 2 boss relic? Personally, since we haven't seen a well-laid plans yet, I want a Runic Pyramid. Would be my personal favorite. We no longer want to see Pandora's box now that we've gotten rid of all the strikes, essentially. I'd be okay 
with an empty cage. I'd be okay with a fifth energy in the form of Fusion Hammer or Coffee Dripper or Cursed Key or Slaver's Collar. Those would all be fine, too. Astrolabe would be okay, just like Empty Cage, but not amazing. Would I remove Terror now? No, I think it's really powerful just for making Flechettes do more damage. Velvet Choker. Um, actually, yeah, Velvet Choker could be okay. It makes the Blade Dance weird, but... I could remove that Blade Dance now. I'd rather remove the Blade Dance than remove the Terror. Kate Bogue, thanks for the Prime sub. And uh, just a minute ago, Dr. Jeeves, thanks for the $50 tip. Dr. Jeeves says, love your content. Why, thank you. All right, I think I'm settled on Crippling Cloud here. Opinion on removing Invenom. Now that we have a Catalyst and a Flechette, I like it. I like it. It's also a good way to remove Artifact from foes. Get a footwork upgraded here. All right, champ, if that is your real name. So against the champ, our goal is stack a bunch of poison and then play Catalyst and use Wraith Form to block the Execute turn. So our current primary goal is to stack as much poison as possible. I actually don't know that we want to lower champ's health outside of poisoning. I don't think we do at the moment. Not until we have Venom in play. So let's both play the Terror and the Deadly. Draw one less. This is a fine draw. Twenty-eight. That's a big number, sir. Next turn's a free turn, so we can just play the Venom, no problem. Let's go Venom, which made all attack free. Sure. Fair enough. Classic. Yeah, why don't you just get a whole bunch of poison, sir? Lots of good blocks in the draw pile, so let's do this. All right, he's above half health this turn, so if we send him below half health, then he'll purge debuffs next turn. So we want to put, essentially put our poison on champ as high as possible. We could use the duplication potion now to kill champ, but quite frankly, there's no real reason to because we can assuredly kill him without it. So easy choice would be dodge and roll defend, deadly poison catalyst. That brings champ to 38 times three. We'll take 114 damage this turn, 113-ish next turn. We play Wraith Form next turn. We have several turns to do enough damage. I think that gets us out of the fight without any potion use. Could Crippling Cloud before we poison. That'd be another 21 poison. It's 135. But we'd have to tank 22 to the face. Uh, a little bit less than 22 to the face. There's no real need for that either. Let's just do this. So on this turn, he purges all the poison, which means we can't just uh, do that to kill him, alas. But we will be intangible for Champ's Dreaded Execute, giving us essentially three turns to deal 60 damage.
did that wrong. Oh dear. You are... very armored, sir. So I actually can't break through your block to kill you. I guess I'll just block you to kill you. That'll work. Bye. Face my wrath number two. The double wrath. GG. Champ is defeated and we get offered a burst plus. There's now a catalyst in the deck, which makes burst plus um pretty good. Opted out Act 1, but ended up building it anyway. I mean, Toxic Egg does do that a lot. Burst Catalyst. Yeah, we really want a Pyramid now. No kidding. Burst Catalyst is very, very powerful, but you do have to draw the two together. Other thing we can do to make that consistent is card removals and card draw. More energy is pretty good, too. Alas, there is no Runic Pyramid, but there is the Velvet Choker, limiting our cards per turn. The Coffee Dripper, limiting our rests or the Busted Crown limiting our card rewards. Gotta tell you, I'm perfectly happy with five energy here. Especially with the regeneration potion to heal us to exactly full health at the sort of next act. I really like taking Coffee Dripper. Pretty hard to need to rest with so much defense in the deck as well. Like, sure, the choker choker works with the pocket watch, but there's definitely turns where we're going to want to play more than six cards per turn with the bullet time and the burst. So I'll take a dripper pretty happily. Crown, I mean, the deck is mostly complete, so there is reason to want crown, but opting to... Opting to take Crown here is going to mean missing stuff like Acrobatics Plus, and more copies of Backflip Plus, missing out on well-laid plans. We really want to be able to see more card rewards so that we can we can get a few more important things. So I'll happily, happily take the Coffee Dripper here. I'm not that afraid of what the final act has to offer. Although we do have to do two elites, more or less, in a row. We at least get to stop into a shop first. And after that, who knows? Wow, it's lots of elites this act. Would I take a second Catalyst Plus at this point? Yes, definitely. Very, very definitely. So, have to go for the Burning Elite. That makes our path somewhat fixed here. I'd like to go through a shop at minimum to remove this strike, but hopefully buying a well-laid plans or an acrobatics or something at the same time. That would be the goal. Gonna draw more cards. These three are kind of nasty. Hey, Sprunzo, grats on that first Ascension 20 heart kill yesterday. That's cause for celebration, hey? You're the weakest and easiest to kill. Uh, we don't need the neutralize, huh? Unless the damage is making the difference, let's do some math. Let's see, so with plus one, this is five times four, 20, 24, 31. Oh, I did need the one from playing in Venom before Dagger Throw. Son of a heck. <laughs> Son of a heck. All right, so I can't kill him. Means I do what, take 10? I don't like that. I don't want to take 10. Son of a heck. I mean, we are going to play bullet time, but that doesn't prevent me from taking 10. It's the thing. That's the thing. I suppose the regen potion will, will make up the difference, but I'm not happy. Let it be known that I'm not happy.
actually don't want the fight to end until I get all the health from the regen potion. That's kind of important, too. Let that not occur. So if you go to 15 poison, you'll die next turn. That'll be perfect, actually. As I heal, then you take damage, and they die. So just play up to as many cards as you want this turn. Me. Alright, and I did get a potion, so actually I feel completely okay with how that went. And I feel completely okay with another backflip in this deck. It's block with lots of decks, it's card draw with lots of energy, it's good. Event or another combat? Right before the shop, we'll take an event here. Which was not worth it. That's okay. We do get offered more poison options, and there are numerous. There is a Twisted Funnel, allowing us to apply four poison to all enemies on turn one, or remove an artifact layer from all enemies on turn one. There's another Deadly Poison Plus. There's a Noxious Fumes for poison every turn. There's even a Finesse for zero cost block and draw. But what about Calculated Gamble card removal? You can also do this, and that's pretty good as well. Tough bandages incoming? I'd, I hope so. Double Gamble is really spicy, especially now that we have the second backflip to get cards in hand. Certainly I want to get rid of this last strike. Please, please, yes, let's do that. <laughs> Hello and welcome, Lord Treex. It's good to have you here. Hmm. I think I'd rather take Gamble over Fumes here. Ulti Energy. Thank you so much for the gifted sub to Lord Bio. Take the Gamba. This man really dislikes strikes, they say. Can you blame him? This bullet time is spicy, though. Oops, explode you, not the spiker. The blockening is complete. Note that while intangible, I can hit the spiker and still only take one damage, which is pretty nice. Acrobatics Plus. Draw four, discard one. Okay, now we have basically the full draw engine online as well. From here we can take Tacticians, we can take Reflexes. Take a lot of good stuff. Do I just Wraithform turn one? I don't think so. Not against this foe. Dead. Oh, maybe should have Wraithform turn one. Now oh, we got Burst Leg Sweep. All will be well. Feels super strong overall, though. I'm really happy with where we're at currently. Sorry, Flechettes. Not actually 
true story. Defend, defend, dodge roll, defend, burst, leg sweep, double blade dance. Shiv this nerd to death. Who even needs a well-laid plans? I mean, really. Sneaky strike, prepared plus deadly poison. Prepared is okay. Not necessarily necessary, but definitely okay. And again, this further helps us if we find a reflex or tactician or something. Don't need plans when every card in the deck is good. That's right. I think I'm going to take one prepared here. Hmm. No burst. I gamble. Let's just play everything. I suppose you don't even need Pocket Watch if every card in the deck is good. <laughs> oh, Jesus. This, ne this nemesis has five strength. I hadn't noticed that part yet. And I'm terrified now. Go Corpse Explosion, Neutralize, Survivor Catalyst. Still Survivor Catalyst. 51 Poison should be a relatively short fight. But whenever the Nemesis attacks, it's going to be for pretty enormous numbers. So that's kind of spooky. everything. Actually, not everything. Leave this at nine. Okay, easy. Okay, well, uh, thanks, Wraithform. Making my life a lot easier here. This would be a disastrous turn otherwise. Have to use the Swift Potion. And then we're just fine. Make sure this is on nine. Probably should have done that differently, though. I might have to play a card now. Oh, no, no, I don't, because I have next turn block. Never mind, we're good. We get a kunai. If we play three attacks in one turn, we can gain a point of dexterity. I guess this blade dance is useful after all. Oh, and an alchemize plus to obtain a random potion. Sure. Why not? It's a pretty good floor. The streamer luck. Let's go, Twitch chat. Let's go. We're... We're in good shape for the rest of this run now, that's for dang sure. Do I take two Madness Pluses? I don't think so. That costs us card draw, which I really don't like. No, I don't think I want these. Ooh, do I Wraith Form turn one against Reptomancer? The answer is very probably. I could even dupe pot the Wraith Form here. I've got Alchemize. I shouldn't be afraid to use my potions. If I dupe pot Wraith Form, all I have to do is just worry about killing a Repto in this combat. Hmm. 
Bite Your Ankle, thanks for 33 months of support. That's right, we could even burst the Alchemize, potentially. Okay, let's play Acro first. See if I can draw the bullet time. Draw the burst. But no poison yet. There's not much point to duping um, Catalyst, right? Alright, let's start with Dupont the Wraith form. Get Catalyst and Dodge and Roll free. Okay, dodge and Roll, Swift Potion. Still have to burst the Alchemize, or I could just Terror Alchemize. Terror Alchemize makes more sense. So, we're losing two dexterity per turn. That part's a little annoying. But what we need to do is just focus on dealing damage to the Reptomancer. Pretty good relic, the Thread Needle. Gives us four plated armor at the start of each combat. Could take a second copy of Burst. That's actually pretty good with all these card draw cards. You could even burst a burst for more bursting. I'll take it. And I'll go Distilled Chaos over the Block Potion. And I think I should take two more combats, unless I feel like upgrades are more important. Uh, two more elites, rather. Unless I feel like I want to go this way for the extra two upgrades. Two upgrades is good. We could upgrade the other footwork. We could upgrade... Is there anything else that matters, actually? We have to get the red key, of course. Could upgrade terror, maybe? Hmm. We're going to recall first of those options, no matter what. Molten Egg. I mean, the deck is short on attacks. What if we added some now that said plus on them? It's pretty funny. So, option A this way. We get three card rewards. Option B, four card rewards. And an event. But less upgrades. Card rewards also mean more potion cycling. I think we want to take more combats. We defeated Reptomancer so easily, I'm not afraid of fights. The event is Sensory Stone, heck yeah. I would like that very much. It's falling. We can lose in Venom, or the Deadly Poison, or the Neutralize. mind losing in Venom. With the burst, I have other ways to get poison up. Although it is nice for artifact removal is the thing. With the kunai, I want the neutralize still. I'll lose the Venom.
Could have played more brink bottle there. Doesn't matter, fight's over now. Not gonna take a cultist potion. Now I think blur is a lot better, as is escape plan plus. Both of those are spectacular. With two bursts, blur is actually ridiculous. I'm going to take Blur here. Because we can burst the Blur and get two turns of Block Retain. The so-called Blurricade. It's not just a myth. It's real, and it's powerful. Let's just let the Ascender's Vein go. Single Burst Catalyst puts an end to this fight pretty easily. wanted to first alchemize. Dang it! How dare you. You can burst a burst, yeah. I should have done that actually there. Here, let's do this. Hit me. Double sweet potion, okay. As we can see, we're starting to choose to play way more cards per turn than the Pocket Watch would have allowed. And we're okay with it. I miss Envenom. Lachette's doing good work, though. A pair gives us a bit more max health. I definitely like that. Do we take a second leg sweep or a third calculated gamble? Or do we even consider an eviscerate plus? I think we're mostly past the point where eviscerate plus could do much. Two gambles feels like enough with both upgraded. Why did we get rid of Invenom? We lost it to the falling event rather than losing our neutralize or our uh, some important skill. I can't remember. Skip these. Our weak cycle's not great yet. I think with Crippling Cloud, it's fine. Otherwise, I would agree. Otherwise, I would be inclined to agree. Alright, 
I'll just keep breaking Pocket Watch, apparently. Who even needs it? Dang it. If you simply draw more cards every turn, it doesn't matter what else happens. We're already full blocking. I can just Terror and draw a bunch. It's going to be a pretty hard draw, but I've got Swift Potions. Okay. Upgrading Neutralize would also mostly solve our problem. I agree with that, too. First is the last card. That means I can guarantee to see it with Dagger Throw. But are we going to be able to block for enough if I go for Burst here? Does not look like it. That'll help. A skill potion. Let's use that right away. Taking one, if I must. One more back flip. Pretty much no such thing as too much card draw on the deck at this point. I'll play Alchemize instead of Terror, but draw still. Poison's our main damage. Cool description, okay. Block can't poison then, though. I suppose that's gonna have to be okay. At least this nemesis doesn't have five strength, like the last one did. Get rid of this. Other good news about the poison cards is I can play them even on turns when nemesis is intangible, and they'll still actually do something. There's a burst. Perfect. Mask means we'll get a cheap removal at the final shop. There's a Tactician Plus. If we want more energy during our turns, we can take this. And I think we have enough card draw. It's pretty good. With so many bursts on stuff like acrobatics. I'm going to take this. And I'll keep... Uh, let's discard this colorless potion. Keep the next potion, which I think is quite good. As well as... Don't forget to recall. Click. Okay, going into our final bosses here, I'm going to take another quick bathroom break so that I may focus fully on the task ahead. When I return, we'll be fighting Donu and Dekka 
Nice burst corpse explosion turn one. I'll be right back, folks. Don't go. All right, folks, we're back. I agree with Zek Zeknar's sentiment right now that um, our heart matchup is still a little bit weak. I'm hoping we can change our potions out to, to fix that. Just a ghost in a jar or even a gambler's brew or a duplication potion or a liquid memories. Any of these would be enough. So, what does our turn one want to look like here? I'm actually a little bit problemized. Uh, I think we... I guess I could defend first. I'd like to blade dance for the dexterity here. I'd like to burst the corpse explosion. So I'm thinking defend... Blade dance... Burst corpse explosion deflect. That's five energy worth. That'll block for 8 times 2 plus 9. 27. No. 25. 25. I'll take 1. There's also a colorless potion I could use. And sorry, that was counting the plated armor. 5 plus 4 plus 8 plus 8. Start with this. Okay, leg sweeps on top. Can't burst that though. I could corpse explosion leg sweep, strip all the artifact off. I'd, we'd ideally like to burst a corpse explosion, remove all the artifact layers, and um, stack the death effect on one of them. So again, the guess then the only question is, do I use the colorless potion this turn? I think the answer is yes. Probably going to be exploding Donu, just for the simple fact of we want Donu to be the one that I can use Piercing Whale or Neutralize on next turn. So we want to remove the artifact from Donu, since we're blocking this turn sufficiently anyway. Do I try to line up a Burst Alchemize in this fight? I don't think I'm going to spend effort trying to make it happen. If it happens, it happens, but I'm not going to count on it. So yeah, I'm going to Bleed Dance, shoot Donu a bunch, and now we're going to Colorless Potion. Mayhem! Start of your turn, play the top card of the draw pile. Let's do it. It's also a power, so it'll make a card in hand free. Why not? And let's Dagger... Do we Dagger Throw first now? free leg sweep. Cool. So I can burst corpse explosion leg sweep, make sure Donu is weak forever? Let's do that. Or I could even burst leg sweep corpse explosion, get some poison on Donu. Let's do it this way. Get him, Plachettes. Now that is going to mess with the pocket watch, but I'm not too afraid. I'm not too afraid. Not at all. So all we have to do is kill Donu one time. I don't think Catalyst now is going to make enough sense for that to work, though. Let's just keep going. Not even going to play the Alchemize yet. We're going to wait for later. And then bullet time, and then bullet time. Let's try to find that blur. Found it. I guess we're using Wraithworm now. That seems to be happening.
Good news is I have nine dexterity. Bursts are both in the discard pile. Alright, I'll just play this one time. We'll just play Catalyst on Donu when we see it, and that should be plenty to win the fight from here. There it is. As high as we can next turn. Good fight. Hey! I didn't say you could do that. GG. Corpse explosion kills the donut. Next up is Time Eater. This guy is a little more annoying for us. I think this is a fight where the pocket watch is going to put in a lot of work. Time Eater says, every time we play 12 cards, our turn automatically ends, which is going to put us into a slightly, but not severely problematic situation. This is a lot of draws. Keep going for the moment. Good. Turf work. Make this a full 12 card turn. Let's do it. Gain a point of decks while we do it. So much for Pocket Watch, I suppose. It's definitely way too early to use the Wraith form. Let's just corpse pass. This is why well-laid plans would have been nice. This right here. So we could try to employ our skill potion. We could just take the damage. Could simply burst the crippling cloud. But even if we burst Crippling Cloud, we're taking 12 here. At least we drew through both slimes. I'm just going to burst this. Let's see what next turn looks like. Could simply Corpse Explosion Catalyst right now. That's not going to, like, instantly kill Time Eater or anything, but it is going to make my life easier in the short term. Let's backflip first. Hmm. Corpse Catalyst Dodger Roll? Puts him to 90 poison? We can't burst the Catalyst. We're going to have a hard time, though. Or else, how do we kill after the debuff? We'll have to just... Poison Time Eater again. There's 
mines. Okay, that's pretty good. Uh, if we can play Piercing Whale on the t Strength Reset turn, we can easily win the fight that way, too. This would also be a reasonable time to cycle the Skill Potion. But then I can't Pocket Watch. I'm gonna Pocket Watch. Take two. It's not below half, though. Made a mistake. But we didn't draw the Piercing Whale. Perfect. Okay, so we're fine, then. Uh, in fact, I'm okay to use the Blade Dance this turn. Yes, I am. Okay, let's do that. Ooh. Still haven't drawn Piercing Whale. Good. Just need to play Piercing Whale and Blur next turn. Whale, then Blur. Time Eater here removes all debuffs, the Vulnerable, the Poison, and resets all the way back to half health, but loses the strength that they had, because we too are cheaty, cheaty, cheaty silence. We're able to do some hot nonsense here. It's a full block already, so let's gamble and try to draw into the Poison. this. Do I get rid of both of these? Let's do it. We should alchemize at some point during this fight. Give one more chance. And so the so-called piercing whale trick happens with bosses that clear their debuffs at a certain threshold. Ten by three, so I can use the auto attack for the most damage. Not to be used on harm, because you'll die. Don't do it. Just flechette's wraith form. That should be good enough. I don't even need to. We can just deflect blur. Do that instead. There's burst alchemize if I so choose. I do so choose. are not great potions. Those will help against the uh, Spire Elites, I suppose. Not what I would call good potions, though. I can also buy better potions, potentially. So, definitely not the end of the world. Okay, we're on to Act 4. With most of our health intact, We'll get one last upgrade, which will be the remaining footwork as we go into Act 4. Two thump, two thump, two thump, a deep pulsing dread can be felt throughout the room is this. The heart of the spire, the source of all these consecutive victories. Can it be? We've got a nice amount of health, too. All right, final shop, what do you have? For me, you have Adrenaline Plus, Panic Button Plus, Centennial Puzzle, Card Removal. There's a lot of good things here. 
Caltrops if we need more damage too. All told options. Shoptions, even. I think I like the block potion better than the strength potion. Yeah, Adrenaline Remove looks pretty good. Could even get behind Adrenaline Panic Button. Metal Philosopher says, Why do so many people jump on Medical Kit all the time? I think it's an overestimation of the negative effect of statuses a lot of the times. It's definitely not as valuable as many might consider. And if you've got bonuses for exhausting, like if you've got Dead Branch, it's really, really good. But if you're just drawing the statuses one or two times during the fight, it really doesn't help you that much. Let's see, what would I like to remove? I wouldn't mind removing an attack, although because of kunai, keeping a couple is okay. <laughs> this on-sale adrenaline is, I think, too spicy to ignore. I'm going to buy it. So I have enough for card removal and a potion, or a better card. The Keltrops, the Panic Button, the Concentrate. Something like that. I think I'm going to go Block Potion, card remove. Does the medical kit work with Tactician? No, it's not a status card. So our main goal in Heart Fight, just Burst Catalyst. Win that way. We're hoping for different, better potions, but these we'll have to do. So, things that I can remove. Dagger throw, maybe. Terror, no. All at attack, plus, maybe? Since I'm rarely playing this card. Although it's nice against Spear and Shield, that's what the poison's for. Let's remove the all at attack. That's our last removal here, and be on our merry way. All right, here we go into the final battles of Act 4. Will it be enough? I, for one, am a little worried. But I like this opening hand a lot. But work first. Burst gets made free. I'm thinking burst, burst, gamble? We'll double gamble. I'll have a lot of bursting power. Could double deflect before I double gamble. But the idea is to draw into a backflip or card draw card and then really get ballistic from there. So I would draw four cards. Three dupes. I'll do it. There's the backflip. Perfect hand. Next four skills are duplicated. I got footwork first. We're hoping this hits corpse explosion. I could also just double burst, double corpse explosion. Uh, double footwork, double backflip, excuse me. Double corpse explosion. But there's two thirds chance I can do both anyways. Dang it. That'll work. <gasps> Omega Pog. <laughs> the power. All right, and one more skill gets duplicated, too, which I think is going to be Corpse Explosion Plus. Or Crippling Cloud Plus. Either is fine. Crippling Cloud takes the artifact off both of them. Yeah. Double Crippling Cloud. Double Cloud. Piercing Whale. Acrobatics. Discard the... T <laughs> Find Bullet Time? <laughs> oh my god. These poor, these poor sons of guns. Oh, you are so dead. You have no idea. I guess we'll kill you first. Let's go. Bullet time. Terror. Lachette's. Corpse explosion. Catalyst. Wraith form. And everything else. 
All right, we won this fight on turn one, essentially. Now the only goal, which I can no longer do, um, is to burst the Alchemize. So let's just try to find and play the Alchemize. Too many cards in my hand. No! Alright, no alchemize for us. Unless... Wait, wait! Yes! Can't burst it, but I'll get rid of the explosive potion. Replace it with... A fire potion! That's twice as much damage to the heart, chat. The heart will never see it coming. Oh, we get an energy potion. That'll be a little bit better. We also get a bit more health to work with. And if we want an additional copy of Blur, which I think is pretty good, or an additional copy of Noxious Fumes. I think the double Blur is going to be really, 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 really good. Give me that. Give that to me. Okay. Fumes, yeah, Fumes was reasonable. We are a little dependent on the draw order to be kind with the uh, poison here. But I think our survivability is through the charts, Twitch chat. Already got burst, dodge and roll, blur, turn one. That's a pretty good start. Even better. First leg sweep burr. blur. Yeah, it's a good turn one. It's not the best turn one, but it's pretty good. It basically gets our first cycle block kind of sorted out. So we go bullet time, defend, dodge, burst, blur, sweep. Apply six turns a weekend for heart. Get 48 block that we get to retain for two turns. You can even make it more than that. Look at that. Easy block every time. I could Wraith Form now, but I think it's too early. I think we just want a Corpse Explosion Defend Alchemize. That's our three cards. Draw draw one this turn, draw a lot next turn. Keep this Wraith Form as an emergency option later in the fight. Using the Block Potion, yeah so that we get to keep the energy potion. We get to blur this block anyway. Jet. Gamble. That's not worth playing. This is also not yet worth playing. Might be after next turn, though. Would have been perfect full block if we hadn't weakened heart. It's kind of funny. All right, Catalyst before any of our block is drawn is not what we're looking to see. However, Backflip then Calculated Gamble looks fine to me. Free Dagger Throw, sure. Go. Maybe you wanted to play Terror? Maybe. Nice at one. No burst for the adrenaline, at least not yet. There it is. Burst blur adrenaline, burst adrenaline crippling cloud. What are we doing here? And I'll probably use the piercing whale. I think I want to burst blur again so that I can keep retaining block. If I burst the blur, we get to retain any block we generate during the buff turn into the first attack cycle. We also get to keep the block from this turn if I use the Piercing Whale now. Or I could just burst Deadly Poison. Ah, we'll just play it all normal style. Burst. Double blur. Double Adrenaline for four energy. Play 
play this. Like slimed of all things free? Heck. Play this for dexterity. Play this, play this, play this. Energy potion to play the crippling cloud. I'll do it. Get rid of that too. That way we shuffle the deck with the burn and the wound in hand. Any reason to play the last prepared? Might as well. Keep that block. All right. And we get yet more blur. The Blurricade continues. Let's do our damage where we can. Blur, dodge, no more cards. Catalyst sighted, however, no bursts. I'm honestly pretty okay with Deadly Poison, Corpse Explosion, Catalyst. Actually, wait, sorry. Corpse Explosion, Deadly Poison, Catalyst, because we know of artifacts. So that would be 27 times 3 poison. All we have to do is survive for six or so turns, and that should be very easy to do with this deck. Could use Terror to Remove Artifact. However, it won't make much of a difference here. Corpse Explosion applies poison first, then... I guess I could go Terror, Deadly Poison, Corpse Explosion, Catalyst, and get six more poison. That's reasonable. Okay. More dexterity, please. Double Burst. Duplicate the next many, many skills. Next four skills get duped. So, Double Blur. Double Backflip. Double Bullet Time. Double Blur again. Double Corpse Explosion. Double Defend. Double Deadly Poison. Double Deflect Plus. Yeah. Excuse me, sir. You can't do that. That's illegal. Yeah, let's let's top up our health too. Why not? Use that now. Stop is already dead. That's what they think. You don't know the half of it. Fools. Wow, this deck was so strong. Five, four stacks of blur? Why not? Why not? Faley, thank you so much for the ten gifted subs. It begins. But I'm blurring, hold on. I'm trying to focus, yet everything just keeps getting blurrier. Six times nine. Nice. G, G, everybody. That makes 17 in a row, tying the current world record rotating streak. Hey there, if you enjoyed that video, watch this one next. And before you go, join us on Twitch and watch live. I'm there five days a week playing Slay the Spire, answering questions, and chilling with the community. Click the link in the description to follow right now. Ta-ta for now.